All right, we are back. And uh, we have a amazing segment right now. We are going to talk about the last year of Spelunky 2 with some good friends, Gary, who uh, you've heard from a lot today, who organizes Moss Ranking currently and created Mod Lunky and also set up this document for us that we'll be talking off of. And Hectic, I uh, will actually say hi, Gary. Oh, hi. I'm okay. here. And I can also say hi, Gary. Okay, there you go. And Hectic, who is... Uh, you're currently number one on Moss Ranking, right? Nothing's changed? Yeah, for now. Okay, number one on Moss Ranking, world-class runner, one of the best gamers you know, and a good friend. And Twiggle Soft, the first, world-first, completer, Cosmic Ocean, in hot contention with Noak Duro back in the day, a whole year ago. Uh, say hi, Twiggle. Hello. And finally, Derek Yu, Moss Mouth himself, creator of Aquaria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the person in this group that probably knows the least about Spelunky 2. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you don't, you know, you're not. You're not sitting there researching it like like we are like nerds, right? You're not a nerd. Oh, we have we have so much to talk about with the ownership system, Derek. There's a lot to learn. <laughs> oh, the ownership yeah, no, I'm here system. to learn. I'm 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 here to be a student. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've got the Spelunky wiki open. We'll we'll need more than an hour to get through the ownership system. That one's a a little piece of chaos. I mean. I don't even know what you're talking about. So. <laughs> it's 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 a thing we've been doing a lot lately with pacifist stuff. It's just okay. you know, if a oh, shopkeeper right. shoots his shotgun and kills a snake, it'll it's not your fault, right? Unless you stomp him after, because then you own the bullets because the bullets are owned by the shopkeeper, which you then own. And so then if they kill another snake, it's not pacifist. Look, we we can do this another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I remember that that actually being something that Andy really hated in um, Spelunky One. I was just keeping track of that stuff. It's one of those things where it's just you don't think about it when you set out to make a game and then it's like, oh yeah, you've got to like keep track of just to, you know, just to show what you killed in the transitions, right? You've got to keep track of, of what hit what. And it's very complicated in Spelunky. And um, I remember him commenting on how, yeah, he just, it's just not something you think about. And it's something that ends up taking a lot of time and thought when you're making a video game. Um, one of those many unexpected things. So yeah. Uh, I'm I'm glad I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's this beautiful, chaotic, modular little system that yeah, the, you know, the one you that eventually get. The thing that comes to mind is the whipping elevators, giving you ownership oh, of the elevators, which was patched. Yeah, that got patched. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> you sort of, I sort of whipped an elevator one time, and we found out that if you do that, you permanently own the elevator forever, and anything it does is your fault. <laughs> Uh, right. That got fixed. That makes sense. I <laughs> yeah, think. I agree. Because, you know, when you whip the <laughs> elevator, it does nothing. So it now needs to be your fault. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah, that's, that's, that's a kind of wild stuff that we, there's just no way we can foresee that having exactly. any kind of impact. I mean, especially pacifist is just not, that's just not a way of playing that um, we considered a lot, like during. Yeah, you should have. It's, it's stupid and bad. That's my opinion. Well, on the, the thing is, you put it in the journal, so it became like a very official run type. <laughs> yeah, no, we all we That's all got true. Crazy. Yeah, I you guess have no that, idea. That does not mean that we necessarily thought about it a lot. <laughs> TV robot alone has spent hours figuring out how to kill every single boss in the game without the game blaming you. It is incredible. Right. Right. Have, it's crazy. have you seen how we kill Eggplant King? No, I haven't. It's horrifically ironic. We literally give the eggplant child a projectile, and then you drop the eggplant child, and then the eggplant child drops the projectile and kills eggplant. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> we yeah. literally weaponize him against his it, it own It sounds father. like Pacifist Run is basically like the very definition of technically abiding by 
the rules. <laughs> oh yeah, like every pacifist runner is just like, look, you can't get me in court, so <laughs> it's just malicious compliance. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, pacifist runners are are basically the most cruel of spelunky runners. It sounds like, which is uh, very yes. ironic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So with the first year of Spelunky 2, we have on the sheet that the first win for Hundun was from DT, obviously unverified. And uh, did any testers beat Hundun in, uh, during testing? Um, like from beginning to end legitimately without no cheats? Yeah. That's a good question, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. I don't know that I ever got to find out um whether lollipop like how much lollipop robot did legitimately i would i i would assume that they did i can kind of search this slack and see if there's maybe something comes up but off the top of my head yeah that's not something i'm aware of i do know that uh someone from the eggplant show i, I think colin might have been the first one to beat hundun before release um no one, none of them got to CO, but they, I know they definitely got Hun done. But DT, uh, only one we can verify is the first one after release, which happened. Yeah, that was what, three days? Yeah, three after days. The release. Oh, anyway. um, that was the first video I could find, first video evidence of somebody saying they'd beat Hun done. Yeah, I was the first to find him, but um, my PS4 was really cursed. So <laughs> they did not survive that fight. <laughs> I mean, you know, the testers really should have tried just shooting Hundun at the start, because uh, if they had done that, they would have gotten the Cosmic pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, I was always, we were all so scared watching your runs, Hectic, just just scared of, of what was going to go wrong. Oh, yeah. Break the record live, they literally the said, game. told me to slow down because they were upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like a mixture of excitement and just complete and utter fear watching yeah. you play yeah it was incredible early on just all the stuff that happened i think the hundun uh skip the glitch was one of my favorites just because it's like with a game as big as spelunky 2 there's so many things that like seem obvious to check but just shooting hundun right at the start like don't even fight him just go to cosmic ocean right that was there for a month before anyone found it and someone someday just decided to do it and it worked <laughs> and it looked just super gnarly uh and obviously wound up being patched but it's just one of those things that's like it was a really exciting moment early on for everybody where uh on all of my runs when i got to hundun i would just shoot the eye and chat would be like what did you just do you can just do that <laughs> why did you why have we been fighting him this whole time <laughs> Right. <laughs> one one thing specifically about that DT run is that he did not use Waddler to get the bow. Uh, not not. What, right. It wasn't that run, was it? But it was the, yeah. I don't think first, it was that run. It was first CO. His first right. CO run. He did not use Waddler to get to Cosmic Ocean. And I think the reason we we didn't think of that is because if you don't put anything in Waddler, he doesn't actually he doesn't, appear yeah. in seven one. Yeah, yes. we didn't know right away. Waddler was very mysterious to begin with. I think we found the Ice Caves one and the Olmec one pretty quickly, but yeah. the Sunken City yeah. one was uh, a little later. Yeah, and that's the same reason that Eggplant Show didn't didn't get to Cosmic Ocean before release is because they didn't learn how Waddler worked until, <laughs> until after the game came out. That uh, uh, DT Hunden win actually has a death skip in it back when the... Uh... Oh Tide yeah, death it was totally free. Oh yeah, that was that got right. changed. I totally forgot. Yeah, they patched it the day I edited my full Cosmic Ocean guide, the the first video that got views on my channel. Uh, they patched it that day, and I had to edit out the segment <laughs> where I did the skip <laughs> <laughs> and go back and, and clip myself dying to it because it was theoretically impossible at the time. This is before you uploaded it? This is before I uploaded Right As I was editing it, it was patched. Oh, okay, see. That and was it, nice. It was, yeah. It gave, but that, you, it gave you some chance to fix it at least. <laughs> that video became outdated like a week later because the cut, the old Mac, not a week later, but so many, so many things were getting patched out uh, or, or fixed early on. So like old Mac, the old Mac fight being patched. Um, 
for example, obviously that my my guide is like sit on top of Olmec for five minutes. <laughs> Get a snack. <laughs> yeah. play, play a game of chess. Yeah, I mean Olmec. It, it's definitely one of those situations where it's just like, you know, I I played it a very specific way, and I was obviously not thinking about playing it in like a super optimal manner. I mean, in in hindsight, it's it's obvious that's that's what you you would do. But you know, when I was when I'm playing it, I'm just playing it for fun. Yes. Um, yeah, that was what I was saying a lot of times because people would like complain about Olmec in my chat, and I was like, well, you know, you're kind of making that choice for yourself, right? Like, don't get me wrong, I get it, but at the same time, I never had a problem with Olmec, like really at all until. Like, yeah. The I only think... thing that I was bugged by was that it was hard to hit the orbs three times which then also got changed which was nice but i never sat on top of him because i was like that would be kind of boring <laughs> i don't want to do that <laughs> no i think the hp adjustment on the thrusters was a super good change just because it did compel people to fight him a lot more i feel like right yeah yeah no it's totally obvious that people would do that and i i definitely don't blame anyone for playing for playing it that way and you know playing Olmec chest when they're, when they're uh, sitting on top of his head. It makes perfect sense. Um, so, and ultimately, I think that the current version of Olmec is just much better designed and more fun, period. Oh, so so yeah. I'm glad we got there. But um, yeah, you know, it's just when, when there's, when you have to think about so many different things, trying to get the game out the door. Yeah, it's just, some of that stuff just gets missed, basically. Yeah, so hey, people got some stretch breaks. And, and now, good. now we don't. We we're back. We're straight back to never fighting Olmec again, <laughs> with all the current skips in every category. Oh my god! Which is fine Pretty... because casual yeah, players would fine. never figure that out. That's fine, you know, because the thing is, when you're playing the game casually, like you might never ever f discover or want to attempt any of these skips. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's fine if like the really high level players don't fight Olmec. Like that's that's totally part of the, the game's design, I would say. Um, being able to skip stuff. I get asked that question a lot. It's just like, you know, were, were oh, yeah. any of these skips intended or, or not? And, and my answer is just that, you know, these specific skips that have been discovered were not like planned. Yeah, you didn't design. make them. Yeah, exactly. But the... The game is designed so that the possibility of skips and glitches and things like that being discovered are, you know, pretty high. And then it's just a matter of once they are discovered, whether they are too easily exploitable or not make the game less fun, et cetera, et cetera. That's what, uh, that was kind of what I tried to tell people early on with like the uh, death skip and tide pool. Um, because a lot of people were just like, there's no way that like Derek would have wanted this to be a thing. This seems completely busted. And what I would always tell them is like, do you guys think Derek doesn't know how to kill you? Because like, that's like his whole thing. He, he it, Spelunky is based upon like thousands of possible deaths. Falling lava is not that definitive of a death. And I think Derek knows that by now, right? Because you know, there's gonna be some way that we're gonna find out how to get around the lava, right? Um, at this point, we know how to do it with literally just a bomb and like some ropes, uh, because it's it's chaos, right? It's it's one of those things that just there's so much opportunity to iterate upon it, and that's why like I, I think it's been over the course of like six or seven months that we found so many different methods to do it because like every time that we think okay, this is the best way, this is the most efficient, someone winds up finding a new method that's like has even more potential and then you know casual players see that stuff and they're just like wow that's so cool and crazy i'm just gonna die because i can't do that anyway <laughs> yeah it's really no, totally oh, go ahead uh, go ahead i was gonna say it's really interesting how all the skips kind of changed the speed running categories in this game like there was a lot of contention about around trying to infer developer intent oh, yeah. early on and yeah, because there are well. skips um like do we allow skips? Do we not allow skips? And we ended up with a lot of different variations of, of categories because of that. And that's just when like the patches were coming out every other week pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. was a lot of chaos. That 117 <laughs> yeah, run. 
I don't know, you know, how... I mean, I think it really depends on the game, but as far as, like, other roguelike developers, I don't... I don't know how what their feelings are exactly about that kind of stuff, but Spelunky is definitely designed, you know, as kind of like a playground for for players to to discover their own um you know just discover things that we we didn't intend and to find ways to break the game and to you know make the game feel busted and then it's just it is going to be kind of like a back and forth though like you know if you all find something that is too busted we got to do something about it um yeah and there's just there's kind of no way to to anticipate that before the game comes out right you um, slam your metal fist down on the desk and you say the community can't get away with this <laughs> yeah exactly so the speaking of things that you didn't intend the early cosmic ocean issues we we as a community had with nocturo blowing up the exit and not being able to enter the the door and then the crashes on ps4 i'm sure that was a disaster for you guys watching that uh i mean yeah i think i think seeing the game crash late um you know and and, and seeing the uh the progress get wiped get wiped after after all that hard work it is definitely like very painful um but you know i think i think all the players that were able to do that so early on also really took it in in stride and i think it ended up being really good content for their streams too it was a great narrative <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> yep um and uh you know i think i think it was it was actually very important i think for everybody for everybody else to have these intrepid explorers kind of making their way into uncharted territory um so so early on and i mean, i don't know i don't know how you all felt about it but it, it it seemed like it was kind of a badge of honor in some ways to crash the game deep in, in the cosmic ocean or something like that um i feel like it definitely makes for good content and like it gets people talking and there's that kind of emotional aspect of it but it's still fun and it kind of added to the story i feel like i mean it definitely makes sense almost thematically that the game would crash when you get to cosmic ocean or somewhere in cosmic ocean I mean, I don't want to get too Hideo Kojima about it, but you know, that's it's honestly something that I could see Hideo Kojima doing is like purposefully crashing your <laughs> your game at a point where where it thematically makes sense. I remember he in some interview he talked about how he wanted to make some game where if you game over, like it actually just like purposefully bricked your your game so you can never play it again or something like that. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call it an an ahead of its time experience. Those, <laughs> those early days of uh, Spelunky two playing. So UFO fifty is gonna have a game where it just uh, just deletes that game permanently from your install. Actually, Zach Gage, the uh, my friend and, and game developer who uh, makes a lot of cool iOS games, he he actually one of his very I think maybe the first game actually that he released um, that I I didn't play, but I, I did cover this on TigSource, and I think this is the first time I, I like found out about him. But it was this game where when you play it, it like randomly deletes a file from your hard drive. <laughs> like every time you play. <laughs> oh no. So as you play the game, you're like you know, eventually you're just gonna like destroy your computer, basically. Um, very, very avant-garde kind of performance art sort of video game. But yeah, I, th I thought it was a cool idea. It, the game gives you plenty of warnings. Like it, it, it's not trying to trick you or anything like that. Like it tells you like, this is what, what the game is all about. But <laughs> yeah. There's actually a Doom variant that every enemy you kill kills a process on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds... That sounds extremely close to the game that that Zach made way back when. New cosmic patch. Every time you die to the jellyfish, uh, that's a file gone. Sorry. Yeah. See, <laughs> if only. 
if only i'm sure there's some um i'm sure that's going to pass certification if we try to add that into the if game. you die to the jellyfish the jellyfish appears in real life <laughs> every time you die to a jellyfish it buys a game on sony marketplace the so with the the early cosmic ocean finishes i have the chart uh on screen now uh or actually that's the any percent but any percent in cosmic ocean uh we see that twiggle got the first co clear in uh what is it four hours and 19 minutes followed up by hectic getting a clean completion in an hour and 44 minutes uh i know that the the devs were watching those streams i i remember hearing you say that you were surprised that we didn't beat cosmic ocean faster i said that yep <laughs> let me see what so the first cosmic ocean win 10 14. yeah 10, it was just 14. under a month barely yeah i guess i i i, I guess i was somewhat surprised um yeah, like a month. I don't know. That seems like within within the realm of reason, but I just <laughs> I have I have a lot of respect for the Spelunky community in particular and what they're able to do. So it to me, I, I I'm always expecting that something is going to get beaten like within a week of release. Even even Cosmic Ocean, as hard as we made it, I just I guess I it's always a possibility in my head that someone's going to beat it within a week of release because that just happens so much with so many other things you know so the Splunky community needs to step it up they're not good enough at your game that's it makes sense yeah so yeah i'm disappointed now because <laughs> uh no i'm kidding um i mean a month is i think a month is uh, between like a week and a month is honestly within within my expectations for sure but I guess maybe a month is is more on the longer end of my expectations for being able to beat anything in Spelunky. We just weren't thinking about it right early on. We were we were all sitting around taking our time, and then eventually we sort of realized, wait, you know, with this whole looping thing, maybe we shouldn't be in these levels for so long. <laughs> yeah, the first uh, few times we got to see, oh, Wolfo obviously got there. And was just like, uh, uh, what is all this? What is going on? Um, but oh then we 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 learned about the orbs. I swear it was like it took like three attempts to even learn about like what the orbs were gonna do. Yeah, I did. So on my first attempt, I I wound up looking back at it a while later, and I realized that I just I got a bad cosmic level before we knew bad cosmic levels existed. <laughs> I never found an orb. That's like incredible. I looked around for three minutes and they're just I didn't find any. <laughs> so I was just like, huh, I wonder what that was all about. That ah, better luck next time. <laughs> I remember thinking the the orbs were enemies, like aggressive enemies. Because they would wobble a little bit. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, if you jump at the wrong angle, they become pretty terrifying enemies. Very yeah, true. they are surprisingly hard to find, even if the level's not like super huge. It is it is pretty easy to lose your way. And Sometimes they just just in case you know anybody board. doesn't know, but Eric was actually the one who did a lot of the level design for Cosmic Ocean. Um, Eric, who did the audio design and music for Spelunky Two, and did the music for Spelunky One. Um, just because toward the end of development, when we needed to get Cosmic Ocean finished up, I was busy with a lot of other stuff and eric had uh, a little bit of time and so we thought it made perfect sense for someone else to take over the level design for cosmic ocean since it was such a different place and it was kind of meant to be really chaotic and in in a lot of ways like not a friendly like well-designed quote-unquote area so i just I think Eric, uh, Eric and I were both like, yeah, just just go nuts with it. And yeah, like elevators on the entrance and crush blocks on the entrance. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> all that stuff, blame Eric, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. He did a great job. Cosmic Ocean is really well designed. 
Yeah, no, I think it feels I think it feels really good for what it's supposed to be, which is the important thing. Yeah, and it's a, a really nice first if someone's first clear on Twitch is a really great experience. Even if it's not as entertaining the hundredth time you're there. Um just like any arcade game would be. Uh eventually becomes monotonous, but the first time you're there it's like, you know, it's an endurance test. Which is I mean that's just yeah, it's a testament to how how many times that that you all played Cosmic Ocean. <laughs> um I think for most people it's like they kind of just take a dip in Cosmic Ocean every now and then. Um so I think it stays it stays pretty fresh in that sense. Oh yeah, definitely. It is very long yeah. though. It's so long. <laughs> it is. What are you talking about? It's only forty two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like I'm actually impressed less than three months Ivy did it in under an hour. Like the, yeah. the ability for people in general to do sub hour cosmic ocean is so impressive to me and it's it's been really awesome watching that progression. Yeah, that is wild to be able to beat cosmic ocean that fast. Yeah, hectic hectic, you have the world record right now, right? Yeah, somehow. Oh my it's god, just your run is because, nuts. Like, I was, um, I was, I don't want to take too much credit, but I think I was like one of the first people to be like, yeah, sub hour cosmic is a thing that we're gonna do, right? Um, you were saying, you were I, saying that whenever chat was saying cosmic ocean's like five hours long, you can't beat it that fast. It's yeah, a, it's and too long. Sub hour seemed like. Even to me, like I knew it was going to happen, but I was just like, it was so intimidating. It was this baffling goal to ever go for sub hour. And it took me a really long time to do. And it's so funny to think about that now because in the Cosmic Ocean record run, I could have gotten to the exit and then sat there for 18 minutes <laughs> and it still would have been sub hour. <laughs> but back then it seemed so impossible. So it's like this insane sort of progression that we've had to this point where it's like, this thing that seemed unimaginable is now something that I could have done quickly enough to also have a lunch break and then come back and hit the exit door button. Uh, it's nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's something that I find so cool about records in general is just, you know, the fact that someone can show that something is possible just once. It just how much difference that makes, I think, to everybody just psychologically trying to to do that thing you know um and so yeah i don't know it's just it's it's really cool i think seeing seeing record after record and and how fast the progress is like once someone has reached a milestone like how quickly they someone else or you know the same person can get to the next milestone is is really neat yeah it's pretty crazy like how I mean, I know that I personally get pretty inspired from time to time when like DT gets crazy records. Uh, and then sometimes I'll try to like either match them or just improve my own stuff. And then, you know, there's other things like um, the any percent speedrun record, which uh, I was really, really pushing for because we were so close to Spelunky 2 being faster than Spelunky 1. And so I just for like a, a week or two was just Every single time I got a teleporter, one more try, one more try. And uh, for now, it's still faster than Spelunky 1, but we never know what Kenny might do. We'll see. Faster oh, than Spelunky 1. Spelunky 2 is faster than Spelunky 1. Yeah. By like 1.8 seconds. Oh, gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, just due to the Olmec fight. 35, and Spelunky 1 is a minute 37, which to be fair, is just because you timed the Olmec cutscene in Spelunky 1. <laughs> That's the only reason why that I could get it faster. But yeah, if, if you count the Olmec cutscene in the first game, um, Spelunky 2's run is actually faster now. Yeah, it's just, it's really amazing to see how some of these decisions that we make during development, just the effects that they have on speed running. Like, you know, it, it could be something that, I mean, we're obviously just not a lot, of, a lot of this stuff, we're, it, we're, we don't have speed running in mind at all. Um, but it's it's cool how much of a difference it makes in the end. Well, shout out to I mean, Blit for adding all the uh, the speed run features, all the resetting individual data on your save. Yeah, they've they've worked so hard, um, you know, leading up to release and and also after. 
So it's really cool. It's been a great experience working with them. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, <laughs> not everything is considered for speedrunners, and someone immediately mentions the quill back push block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 double the double push block. How much do we have to raise to get that push block patched out? <laughs> wait, which wait? Tell me about this. On Quillback, there is a fifty-fifty chance that to get to the exit, you have to push a push block, and it costs five oh, seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> And there's nothing you can do about it in a lot of categories. Five seconds, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm I'll, just I'll saying, like, $5,000, that's $1,000 per second of time save. Just think about it. It's true, we're almost yeah. at $5,000. Okay. I, I see I see why y'all had me on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like... I, it's just an idea. I thought you might like it. Yeah. Hey, for the record, for the record, my my times are not affected by that five second push block. I can PB with that there. Look, Zana's These like guys. sugarcoating. He's he's a sweetheart. Derek, it's affecting my bottom line. I mean, <laughs> very. It's it's very clever of you to kind of sandwich these direct requests <laughs> between some friendly banter, catching me off guard. This is the villain arc, Derek. I don't know what to tell you. You came on here knowing that I was involved and you trusted me. That was your first mistake, and it won't be your last, but... No, yeah. I trusted Xanagir, which was... That That was a huge mistake. Oh, no. Why, mistake. Why, why would I... I'm not even asking for it. I'm backing away. I'm saying don't patch it, okay? No, the next patch Jeez. is going to make it 100%. So Actually, it's yeah, fair. you know what? You know what you can do, Derek? You can just make it always the push block because then it's not a time loss anymore and we'll just push it every single time. There, <laughs> final offer. I'm going to put 10 push blocks, 10 100% push blocks. Uh, make sure they're there. horizontal so that you just can't leave. Yeah, it, it, this, is, this is definitely there. like a monkey paw curling for you. It's going to be like the whole level is going to be nothing but push blocks. It's going to take... <laughs> like a guaranteed 10 minutes it's gonna to feel like uh it's gonna feel like one of those pushing push blocks one of those free-to-play iphone sliding puzzle games where you just have to <laughs> yeah push actually the push what blocks. i'm gonna do yeah what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna call it i'm gonna call it a, an homage to nethack because nethack actually has a soko bond level where you push boulders around <laughs> so that's what i'm gonna call it. i'm gonna call it the uh the spelunky to soko bond level uh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so good. Twenty dollars hey, from the Soul Fury. Thank you. I actually yeah. al always thought that was so ridiculous that they had that Soko Bond level in that hack. It it seems so out of place oh, to and me. You, and you push that. You take that anger and you push it on us, the Splunky community, by putting a push <laughs> exactly. block at the end of yep. pullback. <laughs> yeah. Killing everyone's runs and ruining their life. But there's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be part of the level that it's gonna spell out hectic with push blocks just. <laughs> so everyone knows like, why this is why this is happening. <laughs> this my, the, my name in the credits is just gonna have like an accredit accreditation to the Quillback push block. <laughs> That's gonna be the part make, that I'm credited for. Make it a one yeah, in a thousand exactly. chance that that happens, like the uh, locust. Event you know what? Check the Steam ID. Temple. Just make it for me exclusively. <laughs> really, really drive it home. Uh, <laughs> Oh well, the uh, yeah the the hectic branch. So after the after all the crazy speedrun co, we got the triple crown co, where Ivy managed to finish Cosmic Ocean with the true crown, the crown, and the eggplant crown, all at once, which was a remarkable feat that I still have not attempted because it's too hard. I don't I don't want to do that. It takes too much setup. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts it's it's even crazier now because um lava bull just did that in under an hour like <laughs> was it a few weeks ago it's insane <laughs> he is way too good at cosmic ocean absolutely terrifying that's because he lives there oh good good just take a quick jump in the loop for some sec exercise right <laughs> yeah i mean Thinking about True Crown and Triple Crown, I remember before we knew Cosmic Ocean was a 799 ending, there were so many theories about having to get the True Crown to 722. Yeah, like right. all the 22s, like everything was 22. So many theories. Oh my God. I, um, 
Can I bring up the Cthulhu theory thing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Because uh, Derek, early on in um, the game's history, there was a... Uh, uh, I had a bit of a somewhat notorious theory about Cosmic Ocean, where I thought that if you met some circumstances that you would fight a Cthulhu boss. And the reason why I thought that was because of the mural on the main menu screen and on Tiamat's throne. It like really looked like Cthulhu to me. And it turned out like six months later that you confirmed that that drawing was supposed to be kind of a Lovecraftian sort of thing. And that it just wound up being changed later on to Hundun after the fact. <laughs> and <laughs> it was so conflicting for me because the Cthulhu theory became kind of a meme. And I was just like, oh my God, I I feel kind of silly for thinking that there was a Cthulhu <laughs> boss in this game. But then after all this time, I found out that's still kind of Cthulhu. Just for fun. Yeah, no, the uh, that was definitely the planned boss for Sunken City. And Sunken City certainly has some Lovecraftian inspiration behind it. Um, I'm trying to think about how I, I ended up landing on, on Hunduin as the final boss. I think, you know, just doing research about primordial chaos and things like that just came across it and it just it seemed a lot more interesting than Cthulhu which has been done many many times over in video games but yeah I didn't I didn't feel like changing the um the door this kind of center of the door because I still thought that that seemed cool it is cool it, yeah. cool. it just got me <laughs> <laughs> With, uh... And it's still kind of fit because they're because you know we we ended up adding those tentacles to the bottom of Tiamat's level. Yeah, that's Cthulhu right there. That's He's Cthulhu. Just out so to you, stay high. You know what? Yeah, let's let's put a rubber stamp on it. That's Cthulhu. You were right, Hectic. <laughs> Cthulhu is in the game. It's just it's his underground. It's his uh, upside down beard that's like pulling you down into the water. Exactly. In Tiamat's lair. With uh... well, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like the the tentacles, we we'd seen those in the game files, so like it spawned all kinds of crazy theories where people had like get the camera from Tidepool to Eggplant World to take a picture of the Empress because like of all the lore from the journal subs uh, descriptions. Um, were you following that kind of crazy theory crafting, and is that why like some of that stuff ended up getting added into the game? No, that was just it. It was just planned to be in there, and yeah, we just we weren't able to put it in um, before our release because you know it was a, it's a relatively minor thing. And then you know when we were doing all those patches after the game came out, it's like let's just let's just add them now while we have the chance. With so uh... you know I haven't like where where is most of this theory crafting being done? Would you say? A lot of it's in the community Discord server. Okay, that was that's what um, I figured, yeah. That was like a centralized hub for a lot of things, like the community journal. Um, I think we literally had a channel just dedicated to figuring everything out, and so yeah. there was like a, a lot of people like me were kind of doing it solo and trying to figure out as much as they could on their own. But there was also this like collective community effort to figure things out all together, and like whenever a new thing would happen. Um, everyone would gather there to like discuss it, right? So when Eggplant World happened, everybody got together and was like, oh my God, what are all the things that are gonna happen now? Um, and then when Cosmic Ocean came out, we all got together there and we're talking about all the possibilities. And um, one of the things that was kind of hilarious is that uh, some people theorized that Cosmic Ocean ended on 7.99. And um, the reason why is really funny in the uh, HUD, settings that you have uh when you change your hud settings uh blitworks programmed a little display that shows you what it looks like uh and it has everything maxed out the timer the health the resources and the level number which was 799. <laughs> I, I remember, remember telling that, people actually i, I, remember I actually remember that crazy to think that the hud would spoil the ending of cosmic <laughs> ocean there's no way that it's just 799 that would be so weird <laughs> it was true i know i no, i totally remember that like someone maybe it was you hectic saying mentioning that um and i it it bothered me let's just put it that way because it, it, it was just 
because oh. I was I was excited that that the community was trying to figure out when Cosmic Ocean ended and they didn't know. And I I did get uh, definitely a whiff of um, some of the theory crafting, I guess. Now that I think about it, and yeah, I remember being very bothered that we included 7.99 in that HUD and just oh. totally did not think about it. I thought you were bothered um, with me for stymieing the creativity. Yeah, I No, I'm so glad funny. you did actually because you sowed the <laughs> seeds of doubt. So you were you were an agent of chaos without even knowing it really. Yeah, it's really funny looking back that that was just there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like Yeah, no, it's it's funny that you thought that oh, like there's no way we would have been so oblivious as to leave 799 in the hud and just <laughs> yeah. spoil it for everyone no way like, you guys are, you know, behind you guys the are scenes, on the wrong like, track look whoops. elsewhere all right ultimately the community discovered what the ending was by using cheat engine unfortunately Wolfo. well i mean that's what the devs did and the testers did so i mean <laughs> why not right <laughs> yeah i actually am really like as a pc player i i was excited that it was on ps4 first for two weeks because oh yeah that two weeks where yeah. it wasn't on pc was some of the most fun i've ever had in gaming yeah and then like within one day all the files were extracted once it was on pc so like <laughs> i'm very happy that it was on ps4 for those two weeks like it it gave me and the community a gaming experience that we wouldn't have had otherwise i feel like yeah no we were happy with how that worked out too um you know obviously we're excited to get the game out on pc and there are a lot of players on PC, um, but it, we we thought that was cool too. Those two having those two weeks where everything was kind of in in the dark. And you you um, wanted to launch it on PC same day, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, as as a developer, it always feels like if you can do simultaneous release on every platform, it's just I don't know. The prevailing theory is that it's just kind of better from a business point of view um but it's just it's just very hard i think when you're trying to make a a game that's that's really ambitious for the size of your team i wonder and online multiplayer in particular uh just adds a lot of of time and and headache to the development process yeah i we i watched uh nwdd's talk at gdc and during his talk he he ended with, uh, is it worth adding multiplayer to your indie game? And he said, probably not <laughs> <laughs> because it's like the value you get. But I, not that Splunky 2 is obviously an exception to to the rule because I think Splunky 2's community is unique. Um, but maybe adding multiplayer to your online indie game is not necessarily a uh, very uh, worth it endeavor for financial reasons. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's very hard, and Spelunky is a very complicated game, I think, to have online multiplayer. Um, there's just a lot happening all the time in the game, and there aren't a lot of great like optimizations that you can do because everything kind of has to be running at the same time, right? Like, you can't call things that are off the screen, and, uh, you know, the, so much of the game has to do with all the details and and interactions that are that are happening um all at the same time and all the craziness right which you've got to which you've got to to process as you're also like doing this online stuff so yeah it was it was a challenge and um you know blit i think are they're really cool because they, they are always up for the challenge despite being like a relatively small studio to be doing all of this so I, yeah, I mean, I think it was definitely worth it just seeing all of the, the fun that people have playing online. And it was like one of the main things that I wanted to add in Spelunky 2 because it was a big request after Spelunky 1. And it just, it seemed like it would be really awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, I definitely don't regret adding it at all. But at the same time, it, it certainly caused a lot of headaches and and a lot of extra work for sure yeah when i finally released it was it was an amazing amazing week amazing month uh making all those videos with all my friends in the community that i all met through the community 
and uh, it's just every every time I play Splunky 2 co-op, every single time, it's a new something new happens, and it's always it's always a blast. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, multiplayer is such a it's such a different way to play than single player, um, and yeah, I think we're we're really happy with just how it feels and how it adds the different challenges that you don't have in single player and how it, it just makes it possible for people of very different skill levels to play together. Yeah. And I, then just I having still, the freedom to roam in online is is really neat. I still remember one of my favorite moments from doing online co-op so far um, actually has to do with a limitation of it, which is that you can't like you can't communicate like through text in online co-op. And a lot of people don't like that, but I personally kind of adore it because I remember I was doing co-op with um, Tic Tac and two randos online. And I had gotten the Ujid eye, which meant that only I could see what was in the crust. And there was a Matic in the wall at one point, but I didn't have any bombs. And so what I wound up doing was I went over to the part of the wall that had the Matic and whipped it a bunch and then started trying to place bombs and it made that little ch -ch 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 sound effect. And Tic Tac noticed that I was doing that and walked over to the wall and placed a bomb for me and was like, oh, there was a Matic. <laughs> and it's one of those really special moments that's just like, nothing like this ever could have happened if it wasn't for online multiplayer being a thing and having these limitations that wind up creating really interesting side effects, right? Because if we just had freaking text chat, I would have just been like, hey, Tic Tac, there's a Matic in the wall. But because I didn't have that, it became like this goal, like, oh, they can't see this Matic. I'm going to make a lot of noise around it, and hopefully they'll just bomb it, just for fun. <laughs> and it works out. It's amazing. It's so, so fun. That's Yeah, so on that note, actually, we have been considering adding not text to, not text communication to Spelunky 2 online, but we have been considering adding just like some I icon based communication. Like an emote wheel? Yeah, that kind of thing, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, since you brought it up, now is maybe a, as good a time as any to ask you all how you feel about something like that. Um, I think it's fine, really. I mean, I personally think there's, like I said, there's a lot of things that are very, very, um, unique and special about having no communication right i was gonna like, yeah i was gonna say just with how expressive you can be with your character and all the animations uh like looking up or crawling or like you know spamming crouching yeah there's a lot of stuff you can communicate with your co-op partners as yeah i think that's all interesting for sure but i also have to admit that i think there's like a lot of players that get frustrated by that for sure because yeah, they're either not good at like spamming certain things or they have teammates that aren't really paying much attention so it's probably still a good thing to add although personally i think i probably wouldn't use it that much because i just i like i, would, <laughs> I like the silly goofy lunky communication i would love i would love that because uh in my co-op streams with viewers i would love to have people spamming emotes and stuff ducking is great but that's that's where it stops. It's you, you can either be spammy to signify look here. You can't signify why, or you can't signify like don't go here or something like that. Uh, like a few emotes would would definitely go a long way with making it more fun. I think. Um, gotcha. Okay, so, that's it's good to know. I mean, I think it makes sense to keep it fairly esoteric. Still, I think that's definitely in in line with the spelunky design philosophy what you should do is you should make all the emotes uh non-specific make it like a code system so like one's just an idol and then another one's uh like a i don't know a whip <laughs> so it's just you still have to <laughs> try to translate uh right so... right yeah <laughs> no that that makes sense if someone in the in chat said just don't add too many and i think that makes sense too Keep yeah it simple i think that's also part of you know spelunky's design is to have simple controls and and let people be creative and do a lot with them make one an eggplant obviously <laughs> yeah eggplant emote uh yeah, that one's gonna get get misused for sure <laughs> <laughs> so before we have to go i was wondering if chat had anything that they 
would uh, like to know or any comments they want to say. Um, obviously, it's it's been an amazing year, Derek. Happy birthday, Spelunky 2. <laughs> Two people immediately ask for the water to be louder. <laughs> <laughs> obviously a joke. Um, yes. Yeah, Crossway is coming soon. That's coming with the with the next patch. Yeah, that's something that that we're working on and we have been working on. Um, but it just it got to the point where yeah, it was taking so long that it was starting to um, like move into our switch port time, and so we had to put it um, a little bit on the side. Uh, but it's definitely yeah something we're gonna we're gonna kind of start working on full time again soon. <laughs> I just somebody stop with requests. You don't, don't ask about changing. Okay, something. <laughs> yeah, stop with requests. But I do like the person who brought up the crystal monkey. Two thumbs up. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, there's a Tusk Idol, and you can get an altar on the level. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's not going to get a new journal entry. No, more no, 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 entry. absolutely not. That's what I just loved about the skin. Crystal Monkey. It didn't do anything. It was just, it just had white fur. Right. It was just different. Yeah, I have to see if there's room on the texture sheets. I also don't want to add new texture sheets. Um, so, you know, part of that is just, I think, like a creative limitation. I, you know, I, I do use like kind of the space on the sprite sheets to sometimes to just decide like when there's going to be enough of something um, because with these types of games, you can you can kind of just keep adding things forever. So you have yeah. to sort of create, create uh, limitations for yourself. We'll see. So the Crystal Monkey, will it will depend on whether there's enough room on a suitable texture sheet to add it. I'm just saying people liked ear. <laughs> people really <laughs> people liked, liked, liked ear. ear. Ear was so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That was funny. That must have been a lot of fun to happened. draw up, huh? Yeah, no, I like drawing ears. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're really strange when you look at them and you you study them and, and you draw them. They're like kind this of a is funny just shape. Head. That's weird. Yeah, they're just like these these flaps on our head, and they're kind of like wrinkly in a weird way. So, it, that was my pleasure to uh, to draw on a set of extra large ears. <laughs> so, with uh, the the next patch, I guess do you feel like you're coming to the end of the road with Blinky Two updates, or is there more to work on after this big patch? I, yeah, I think we're getting there. Um, you know, there might be, there might be like, I, I don't know. I don't want to say that's definitely the end of, of patches, but I feel like at the very least, we're kind of getting to the end of sort of the, the design oriented patches to like the single player experience. Let's just put it that way. Um, you know, I'm more, more open to adding maybe adding some extra features and stuff to, I don't know, like online, multiplayer, arena mode, stuff like that. I know a lot of people would freaking die to have a way to get Borkapala's N4 back items in CO because 99, 98 levels with four people underprepared is, is, is really not fun for two, two or three people. Yeah, I just, I actually, I was just looking at that, um, and I, I, you know, I'm right now I'm leaning toward changing it just because multiplayer, in general, is just meant to be fun. Um, so I think, you know, even at the higher levels where people are getting to Cosmic Ocean in multiplayer, I, I think it should be fun, and so I'm, I'm definitely open to, I don't know, like, adding coffins more frequently or something to to co for that yeah because right now it definitely feels like a, a thing where it's oh i'm playing single player spelunky and i'm dragging three people yeah i don't me. want people just i don't <laughs> want people to just be sitting around not doing anything i mean the ghosts were added to alleviate that but i think it feels much more different in cosmic ocean when you're a ghost and and also because you're a ghost for so long so that's definitely something that i'd be looking 
to changing. That's, um, that's yeah, awful. people do ask about DLC and stuff, and you know, I, I just never say never, but you know, at, at this point in time, I think I'm just not like huge into the the DLC concept for me personally. Yeah, but hear me creator. out. Battle Pass, the Spelunky <laughs> Spelunker Pass. Every five wins, you get. <laughs> A cool new item. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like a, yeah, a seasonal seasonal character passes. Congratulations, you've roped yourself into working on Spelunky for the rest of your life. You are now <laughs> Fortnite. Exactly. Pass. We'll just have Month to realize one. that I think if you know if we had the if if we had the kind of like DLC sort of mentality with Spelunky one, I just you know when would Spelunky two have have come out? You know. So, there's like only a limited amount of time that we can spend working on stuff and thinking about things. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I already already feel like quite good about what we've done. A lot of it thanks to thanks to Blit, I think, just and and how uh, you know excited and how gung ho they were about about supporting Spelunky. They have been fantastic. Seriously, yeah. I, I always awesome. talk about it, but like one of the biggest surprises to me about Spelunky 2 had nothing to do like with the game itself. It just was how good Blitworks were. Uh, they have been so freaking generous to us, even to this very patch, right? The whole sad ghost incident where I think they just <laughs> didn't quite realize how important it was to score. And, uh, you know, they were just like, oh, okay, we can add it back in, right? And it's just like so awesome that we have people working on the game that are like considering all the opinions and all the ideas that everybody have about what might be best even after a patch comes out, right? Yeah, they're great. They're great. And um, I mean, the, the programming work that they've done is amazing, but they're just so much more than that. And they, you know, they spend so much time also just interacting with the community, which is yeah. a lot of hard work. It's awesome. Yeah, you know Guillermo um, and WDD and, yes. and Javi have been very active on on Discord and on the Steam forums and stuff like that. So they're very cool, very cool. And uh, yeah, I you know I these days I think there definitely is kind of an expectation that people work on on games like for years and years and years and years after they they came out um and you know i think my i think i just feel like still a little bit more traditional um in terms of making games personally and yeah so it, as far as just kind of like the single player experience which i i sort of see as the core kind of like designed part of spelunky from which everything else is sort of based. Yeah, I just feel like that needs to kind of come to an end and move on to something new. Well, it's but, a, you know, I that's... think there's still there's still a few more. Uh, yeah, like you know, the next patch coming up with with um, crossplay and other things, and then yeah, I think we're coming to we're coming to the end of like the design patches. I would say it's it's not a bad place to be it's an incredible incredible video game it's one of the one of my favorites we've had to get very specific with any complaints we have at this point <laughs> it's like, when we get Push to the block. point where it's like someone whipped an elevator and uh it crushed something and that counted as a kill and that, i don't think that should be a kill like that's where we're at with the single player experience now it's just there's this really niche thing that happened once in the nine months that this game has been out i guess a year now that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, you know, I, I have to thank on behalf of me and Bullet and everybody, just all the feedback and community support. It's, you know, it's made working on the game for this past year since release, like, honestly, very fun and very exciting and very gratifying. And, uh, yeah, and honestly, I, I think as, as easy as it can be, um, it's, it's a, difficult task but it's 
you've made it as easy as it possibly can be with the, the great feedback and just so much thought, I think, put into the changes of the game. I mean, I think just as a whole, as a community, I've just, I've, I think we've found that the feedback is just like so thoughtful. You know, it's, it's very little like just, I don't like this. It, it doesn't work for my, play style and so i want it changed you know put clone gun in temple (laughs) (laughs) other than that other other than that yeah (laughs) i mean temple is uh yeah that's been an interesting challenge to to think about um people love the new elixir though they're so excited that's great yeah i knew there was something that needed to be done i think i just i kind of chafed at the idea you know when people i used the fact that they're like imbalanced as as an argument, I think that, that alone was, was just was it's just lame. not enough um, for me. And you know, because it, it it was designed to be imbalanced in some in some sense. But it, after reading all the feedback, it definitely seemed like something needed to happen. But you know, yeah. I think the solution is was just it needed to be a little more a little less blunt. I think, but still, I mean, I think even even the people that were sort of clamoring for changes with uh, Temple, by and large, it was, yes, yeah, very, I think, very well thought out. I mean, given, given like a kind of a big community around a game, I think to have that feeling in general is just, I don't know, I feel like it's, it's, it's pretty rare, so. Temple music just came on the soundtrack. The, the, the Temple is perfect and, and fun. The reward for going Temple is being in Temple, okay? Everyone else can <laughs> can chill out. Oh, so so for gold runs, people go through temple, right? Yeah, yeah. Score goes High to temple. Score. Okay, okay. And we blow yeah. everything up. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we even ended up making a, a separate category for volcano tide pool score. Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't oh, run too see. much yet, but like it's it's like the more restricted route where you have to get a bit more creative. Yeah, I wonder why no one runs score. Well, maybe because. CO score is like 12 hours long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that makes, you know, that makes me happy. I think it's just if, if it was like literally, well, I mean, and you know, you got to fill out your journal and stuff too. So people, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with one route being more played. That's definitely fine and within the design. And I think jungle and volcano is totally different. It's very balanced. The the, the, the nice thing about it um, is that like even disregarding like casual play decision making, even in the speedrunning community and competitive community, there's a place for every area. Um, yeah. Well, we go to some of them a lot more often. Uh, every area is featured in some way, in some run, for some reason, right? And uh, a lot of times jungle temple is like the scorer path and then uh what kind of tide pool is the speed path and it's a really nice just convenient set of identities that i don't think was even like specifically curated that way uh but it, it is really exciting to um be able to show off all those different places um and then there's also yeah, that's characters. what that's what i was excited about was these places having their own identity i think more so than anything else that was really like the driving force behind their designs just making them very visually distinct making them you know just giving them a different feeling requiring you to use different strategies and things like that and i think also just certain places having a reputation for being like worse for optimal play i think that fits into their their personality and identities also yeah so uh, yeah i'm happy with that um Obviously, things can go can always go like a little too far in the extreme direction of being like way too un- unbalanced, and so then you know that's something that we need to address. But uh, yeah, well, with that, uh, we've raised over five thousand dollars. We're at five thousand fifty dollars. Make sure. Ooh, nice! You got any spare money? Exclamation point! Donate. Get some more dollars in that number. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've got to move on to my next segment, the world's first arena bracket tournament. Oh my gosh. Too. I'm so excited. <laughs> no, seriously, I just arena. 
There's I love so arena, much. And I'm you're always gonna, like gonna have fun. wanting to see more arena get played. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you, Derek, for the incredible work you've done with this game. And, uh, Thanks for joining me yet again to talk a little bit about your game. Thanks for having me. Thanks for um, trapping me here with, with Hectic. And <laughs> <laughs> once again, I'm just saying we hit 5K. I, I think it's a great opportunity. <laughs> 5K, so. no more push blocks. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, if we hit 10k, we'll get the uh, the all push block. Every, every tile is a push block level for Hector. Yes! Let's go. Finally! <laughs> content! <laughs> Der Derek sabotaging the donations. <laughs> uh, all right, everyone. All right. Thanks so much, Derek. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank, thank you. So you. Thank you so much. It's been fun. All right. I will. Fantastic. I'll talk to you all again soon and uh, hope you have a good rest of the day. and. Good luck on UFO 50 and all uh, all your busy, busy stuff. Same with you. Same with you. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye-bye.